Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. I think y'all are really going to like this one since making a leather maul is a little out of the ordinary. We're going to be fabricating this maul mostly out of repurposed materials and executing this build with techniques normally used in hentang takedown knife construction. Leather mauls are commonly utilized for stamping or tooling leather projects. The mauls are outfitted with a nylon head so that they do not damage the stamps and so that they provide a dead blow impact. Now for some of you critical viewers out there, I'd like to make a point right now that this is not a DIY leather maul tutorial. This video will not show you the easiest or the cheapest way to construct a leather maul. But if you're interested in a guy in his garage shop using some cool tools and scrap materials to fabricate a leather maul in a unique way, then stick around. The first component of our leather maul that we will be making today will be the top cap and we will be making it out of an old piece of oil field sucker rod. These rods are used to return hydrocarbons to the surface, but this one has reached its end of life, so we will be using it to make this cap. I cut off the bulk of the material and then chuck it up in the lathe to make sure that this surface here is concentric and then the face is nice and square with that surface. This face that I'm facing here in the lathe will be met up with the nylon head of our maul, so it needs to be nice and square. Once we have this face nice and square, we will take a file to knock off the edge, and then also knock off this little nub in the center since my tooling wasn't perfectly set at the right height. We're then going to be drilling a hole in the center of this cap. We'll start off with our centering bit there, then use a quarter inch bit, and then drill up to the appropriate size to tap this cap with 3 8 by 16. You can see there I was slowing it down a little bit as my bits increased in size. I like drilling at slightly slower speeds. This material that the sucker rod's made out of is fairly tough, so I took my time and used ample lubrication with all the operations associated with this cap, especially during the threading process. Once we have it threaded, I will cut off the male threads that were associated with the sucker rod when it was actually being used as a sucker rod. Then we will flip this piece around in the lathe so we can clean up the other end. This other end will be visible once the maul is assembled. So I want it to be fairly nice looking, uh, but I'm cool with leaving a machine finish on it. So we'll face off the end here and then we will chamfer this edge uh, just so that it's aesthetically pleasing. This was the first time I chamfered anything in this lathe, so the setup took me a little bit of time here, but I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out, and I'll probably be using this setup again in the future. Once again, we knocked off any of the sharp edges and the nub with a file. This is how our cap turned out. The only subsequent things I do later on in the build for finishing this piece is to hit it with the scotch Bright belt and give it kind of a satin finish. The handle we're gonna be making out of an old baseball bat that I was given by a family friend when I was 10 years old. So this bat uh, has met the end of its useful life as a bat, but we will use it for the handle of our leather maul where it will do an excellent job. Once again, we are back at the lathe so that we can drill a hole through the center of our handle. We're gonna be drilling a 3 8 of an inch hole to later accept 3 8 of an inch all thread through the entire leather maul. Once I got the center hole drilled in this guy, I cleaned it up with some sandpaper and then brought it over to the bandsaw to cut off the excess. Lastly, to make sure both the ends are square to each other, I chucked it up in my mini mill with a routing bit and flattened both ends so that they are square with each other. Next, we're gonna be cleaning up this piece of nylon. I bought this two inch in diameter piece of nylon off of eBay, and I will put that link in the description below for those of you who are looking to make your own leather maul. The first thing I did with this nylon was to face off one end and then drill a hole in the center so that my live center can support the other end of this long piece of nylon while I make sure that it is nice and concentric along the entire length. I only had to make one pass on it, moving at about four and a half thousands per revolution just to get everything nice and square and it actually gave me a nice little ribbed texture on the maul and I think that will be handy when using it with punches. 
We'll then drill a 3 8 of an inch hole through the center, just like our handle to accept the all thread later in the build. Lastly, I measured off around 2 inches in length and then used the cutoff tool on the lathe to get a nice square cut on this piece of nylon. So that wraps up the nylon component. We're now going to move on to the spacers. I had this old foot from a cheap Chinese power rack that is no longer useful. As you can see, I have already pirated much of the other steel for other projects, but we will be using this chunk of steel for our spacers on the mall. We will be making two spacers. One will land in between the wood handle and the nylon head, and the second one will land in between the wood handle and the nut that we will be attaching at the bottom of our mall that will pull the entire thing together. So the first thing we do is get them nice and flat in the surface grinder and then drill two 3 8 holes which will be the center of each of these spacers. As I mentioned earlier in this video, we will be building this leather mall with a takedown construction. I have been watching many of Kyle Royer's videos lately and I am trying to up my takedown knife construction skills. So this leather mall is a good chance to practice. The first thing we'll do is drill some 16th of an inch holes through our spacer. This spacer will not only be the spacer in between our nylon head and wooden handle, it will also be our template for laying out our locator pins in between the top cap and the nylon and in between the pommel cap and the handle. So we take this spacer between the top cap and the nylon, super glue it to the top cap, and then pull that part of the assembly out of the maul. This will allow us to use the spacer as a drill guide so we can drill some 16th of an inch holes into our top cap. These 16th of an inch holes will accept hardened dowel pins. This will allow us to be able to take the maul completely apart and put it back together and have it land in the same orientation. Once we have the holes drilled into the cap, we will slightly tap on the two components to get them to come apart. I will use some shortened dowel pins to hold the cap and the drill guide together while we repeat this operation on the nylon head. So we get it all nice and tight and then super glue the drill guide onto the nylon head. Give it about four or five minutes to dry and then we can repeat the operation on the nylon head, drilling some sixteenth of an inch holes into it. I had to do a few measurements here since the dowel pins that I will be using are one inch long. So we went into the nylon a good bit here. And you can see how the two pieces fit together once we have the locator pins lined up and drilled. Next we will be using this drill guide in the location that it will eventually end up in, which is the spacer in between the nylon and the wood. We use it to drill some holes into the nylon and then we break the two apart. This is the type of residue that is generally left behind during each one of these iterations. And to clean it up, I just take it over to some 120 grit sandpaper on a granite surface plate. Now that we have some holes located into the nylon through that spacer, we will be doing the same thing on the wood side, gluing the wood handle to the spacer and passing the holes through. This is a mini test fit. I put some hardened dowel pins into the nylon then put the spacer on, and then the wood handle. So far we have the majority of this maul put together. The last part will be the end cap. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll use the middle spacer as a drill guide to drill into the wood, and then we will glue it on to our pommel spacer here and pass some holes into the pommel. Obviously building this maul with these takedown techniques was overkill, but I really did enjoy the process and I feel like I have a stronger product now that we have all these locator pins in this mall. So what you see here is kind of the test fit up before we start shaping the spacers. All of the components are fitting together nicely and I was very pleased at this point of the project. To pull this whole thing together at the end we will be using a nylock nut. So what you saw me doing there was just marking off the end so I know how much all thread to remove. Using the wooden handle as a guide we scribe some lines into our spacers so that we can grind the spacers flush to the wooden handle. I'm going to be taking another page out of Kyle Royer's book and shooting for a museum finish. The way that this is achieved is by taking your spacers and marking out a line that is around 20 thousandths in from the OD of the handle material. 
what this will do is allow a little tactile transition between the spacer and the wooden handle and it does actually feel pretty good in the hand. So we'll take off around 20 thousandths from the spacers and then dome over the edge of the handle material so that it has a nice radius into the spacer. We'll then surface burn this hickory to give it some nice contrast and hit all of the spacer material on the Scotch-Brite belt to give it a satin finish. I really like these Scotch-Brite belts. I use them on knives all the time and they're very handy for this application as well. I'll put some blue Loctite in our cap and start assembling the entire maul. We'll get the nylon head located on the top of our maul and then our spacer under that. Before putting on the handle, I wiped it down with some boiled linseed oil. Not only does this help protect the handle, but it also darkens it up quite a good deal and gives us a better look, in my opinion. And then slide the handle on, then our pommel spacer, and then tighten the entire deal up with the nylock nut. So with that last nut, this is how the mall turned out. And I must say that I'm very pleased aesthetically with how this mall turned out, and I'm pleased with its performance, which we'll get into in a moment. The mall measured at around 18.79 ounces, which I feel like is a pretty good weight, and it fits nicely above my workbench, as y'all saw me hang it just now. I used this maul recently on two sheaths so far, so I'm still getting used to using it, and there was a brief learning curve. I'm happy I used some test pieces before working on my sheaths because I had some mishits, but once I had some practice behind the maul, I was able to get nice solid strikes on all of my punches. Overall, I truly found this maul to be a pleasure to use. Not because it's the best maul ever constructed, but because I was able to use pieces of scrap from my life to construct it. Every time I pick this maul up, it puts a smile on my face. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.